151B and 2 of the Constitution and the Standing Order 78 and 79 of the Senate Standing Orders. The Senate also had His Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa EGH, Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, on the grounds of his proposed removal from office by impeachment of the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. Now, therefore, pursuant to Article 145, as read with Article 151B and 2 of the Constitution and the Standing Order 78 and 79 of the Senate Standing Orders, the Senate resolves to remove from office by impeachment His Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa, EGH, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, on the following grounds. One, gross violation of Articles 10, 2A and B and C, Article 27, 4, 73, 1A and 2B, 75, 1C and 129, 2 of the Constitution and Article 147, 1 as read together with Article 131, 2C and D of the Constitution. Ground two, gross violation of Articles 147, 1 and 152, 1 of the Constitution by undermining the President and the Cabinet and the effective discharge of the National Government's effect, uh, executive mandate. Ground 3, gross violation of Article 6, 2, 10, 2A, 174, 186, 1, 189, 1, and the fourth schedule to the Constitution by undermining devolution. 4, gross violation of Article 161 of the Constitution of the Inst of the Constitution on the institutional and decisional independence of judges. Charge 5, gross violation of Articles 3.1 and 148.5 of the Constitution on the fidelity to the oath of the office and allegiance. Charge 6, serious reasons to believe that His Excellency the Deputy President has committed crimes under Section 13.1a. Give the Majority Leader the microphone. So let me take that again. Charge 6. Serious reasons to believe that His Excellency the Deputy President has committed crimes under Section 13.1a and 62 of the National Cohesion and Integrity Act. Charge 7. Serious reasons to believe that His Excellency the Deputy President has committed gross economic crimes under Section 45.1, 46, 47.3 and 48.1 of the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Act and Section 2.3 4 and 7 of the Proceeds of Crime and Anti-Money Laundering Act. Charge 8, serious reasons to believe that His Excellency the Deputy President has committed crimes by continuously misleading members of the public through false, malicious, divisive and insightful remarks that are contrary to the provisions of Section 132 of the Penal Code and Section 29 of the Leadership and Integrity Act. Charge 9, Gross misconduct that is incompatible with the high calling and dignified status of the office of the Deputy President and a member of the Cabinet and the National Security Council. His Excellency the Deputy President has publicly attacked and undermined the work of the National Security Intelligence Services and its officers. Charge 10. Gross misconduct by openly and publicly insubordinating the President, who is the head of state and government. And... Finally, Charge 11, gross misconduct by persistently bullying state officers and public officers. Mr. Speaker, this is a very difficult exercise that the House of the Senate is being called to undertake. It's the first time in the history, actually, of this country that uh, this is happening. Though under the old constitution, pre-2010, uh, Mr. Speaker, such an elaborate process wasn't available. To the best of my recollection, I don't remember uh, this kind of an exercise where the Senate is being invited to agree to charges initiated by the sister house and confirm them after listening to both parties that appeared before us in the National Assembly versus His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa the last two days. Mr. Speaker, I do this with a heavy heart because His Excellency the Deputy President is somebody that is well known to me. I consider him, Mr. Speaker, more than a colleague in the leadership of this country, more even than just a normal acquaintance in social circles. Majority Leader, you are called upon to give notice.
Notice. Oh, okay. Apologies. Mr. Speaker. Next order. Order number five. Special motion. Proposed removal from office by impeachment of His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, EGH, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. Senate Majority Leader. The mic, please. My apologies, Mr. Speaker. I now hereby move the motion, which is a proposed removal from office by impeachment of His Excellency. Regarding His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, EGH, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, that aware that the National Assembly on the 8th of October 2024 resolved with the support of 282 members, being at least two-thirds of all the members of the National Assembly, that pursuant to the provisions of Article 145.2, as read with Article 151b and 2 of the Constitution and the Standing Order 65.2 of the National Assembly Standing Orders, his Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, EGH, Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, be removed from office by impeachment on the grounds specified in the, spe in the special motion. Whereas by letter, reference NA stroke DLP stroke TBO stroke MTS 2024 into bracket 025, dated 8th of October 2024, and received in the office of the Speaker of the Senate on the 9th of October 2024, the Speaker of the National Assembly informed the Speaker of the Senate of the approval of the special motion by the National Assembly and further forwarded to the Speaker of the Senate documents in evidence of the proceedings of the National Assembly. Further whereas pursuant to Article 145, as read with Article 151 and 2 of the Constitution and the Standing Orders uh, 78 and 79 of the Senate, the Senate had the National Assembly on grounds for the proposed removal from office by impeachment of His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, EGH, Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. And further whereas pursuant to Article 145, as read with Article 151B and 2 of the Constitution and Standing Order 78 and 79 of the Senate Standing Orders, the Senate also had His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, EGH, Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, on the grounds of his proposed removal from office by impeachment of the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. Now, therefore, Pursuant to Articles 145, as read with Article 151B and 2 of the Constitution and the Standing Orders 78 and 79 of the Senate Standing Orders, the Senate resolves to remove from office by impeachment His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, EGH, Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, on the following grounds. One, gross violation of Articles 10 to A, B, and C, Article 27, 4, 73, 1A, and 2B, Article 75.1c and 129.2 of the Constitution and Article 147.1 as read together with Article 131.2c and d of the Constitution. Charge 2. Gross violations of Articles 147 and 152 of the Constitution by undermining the President and the Cabinet and effective discharge of the National Government's executive mandates. Charge 3. Gross violations of Article 6.2.10.2a and 174, 186.1, and 189.1, and the fourth schedule to the Constitution by undermining devolution. Four, gross violations of Article 161 of the Constitution on the institutional and decisional independence of judges. Five, gross violations of Article Articles 3, 1, and 145, 5A of the Constitution of on the fidelity to the oath of office and allegiance. Charge 6. Serious reasons to believe that His Excellency the Deputy President has committed crimes under Sections 13, 1A and 62 of the National Cohesion and Inter Integration Act. Charge 7. Serious reasons to believe that His Excellency the Deputy President has committed gross economic crimes under Sections 45, 1, 46, 47, 8, 3 and 48, 1 of the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Act and Sections 2, 3, 4, and 7 of the Proceeds of Crime and Anti-Money Laundering Act. Charge 8, serious reasons to believe that His Excellency the Deputy President has committed crimes by continuously misleading members of the public through false, malicious, divisive, and insightful remarks that are contrary to the provisions of Section 
132 of the Penal Code and Section 29 of the Leadership and Integrity Act. Charge 9, gross misconduct that is incompatible with the calling and the dignified status of the office of the Deputy President and a member of the Cabinet and the National Security Council. His Excellency, the Deputy President, that has publicly attacked and undermined the work of the National Security Intelligence Services and its officers. Charge 10, gross misconduct by openly or publicly subordinating the President, who is the head of state and government. 11, gross misconduct by, by persistently bullying state and public officers. Mr. Speaker, I have observed that uh, this is such a momentous uh, task ahead, and I never imagined a few years ago, Mr. Speaker, that it will be possible after the journey that we have traveled with His Excellency, the Deputy President, in the political side that I belong to, that hardly two years down the line, I will have the difficult task of having to move the impeachment motion against him after listening to this case brought to this House by the National Assembly, in the case titled The National Assembly versus His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa. And the last two days, Mr. Speaker, together with other Kenyans, we have watched with lots of bewilderment, hard to believe pronouncements, and difficulty, Mr. Speaker, to believe that here is where we find ourselves as a nation. Despite the many challenges that we have gone through over the years, it was our hope, Mr. Speaker, that public officials would have picked up a lesson or two, especially those that are slightly older than yours truly, and many that are younger than me in this house, Mr. Speaker, and that in their conduct, they will reflect better the skills, demeanor, pronouncements of a leadership, Mr. Speaker, that this country continues to yearn for. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, listening to the case that has been brought to us by the National Assembly, I have reason to believe beyond any doubt in my mind, Mr. Speaker, that they have justified the case that they have brought before us and have been able to ably demonstrate to us and to the country, Mr. Speaker, that there is no other cure by design of our Constitution to the challenges, either political or legal or otherwise, that are being faced, Mr. Speaker, by the workings and the working relationship between the President and his deputy, other than by way of impeachment. And the National Assembly has moved this House, Mr. Speaker, on 11 charges, blow by blow, with citations and examples in broad daylight, Mr. Speaker, showing and mapping, Mr. Speaker, that each charge, how it has been committed, Mr. Speaker, and how it violates either the Constitution or various laws of the Republic of Kenya. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, we are left with very minimal options. I have observed before this House, Mr. Speaker, that the Deputy President is personally known to me. I consider him a friend. I have had the opportunity to interact with him, learn a lot from him, Mr. Speaker, listen to his wise counsel sometimes. But this evening, Mr. Speaker, duty calls. And when duty calls, Mr. Speaker, there is very little that we can do. I am afraid, Mr. Speaker, that as legislators, as servants of the people, we have to listen to what the people are telling us. Mr. Speaker, we must appreciate that in 2010, when Kenyans went to the polls and brought about change via the new constitution, it was a call for us to have a better republic than had been observed previously since 1963. And there are various high ideals, high demands that have been placed in all of us that are in leadership. And I must add quickly, Mr. Speaker, that as you rise in stature from a member of a county assembly to a member of the National Assembly, Senator, Governor, 
Deputy President, and eventually even as President, Mr. Speaker, that as you ascend in the hierarchy of leadership, the demands by the Constitution are even more. Number one, because you occupy greater public space, you represent more people. When you speak, Mr. Speaker, you say things that can affect either positively or otherwise the lives of millions of citizens. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, listening to the case that has been laid before us since yesterday by the lawyers of the National Assembly, reading through the bunch of documents that have been presented to us, attached with evidence, uh, Mr. Speaker, I can confirm both to this House and to the country that unfortunately this country must make the difficult decision of having to say goodbye to His Excellency, the Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa, because, Mr. Speaker, the reasons that have been listed have consequences by law of what you do when this happens. The National Assembly has demonstrated before us, Mr. Speaker, that on charge one, that there are various articles of the Constitution, either through his utterances or his actions, Mr. Speaker, that have led other Kenyans to seriously believe and feel lesser Kenyans, Mr. Speaker, something that we thought we had slayed. We thought that we had worked so hard to build a cohesive society where it didn't matter after a political contest, Mr. Speaker, of who eventually wins, that you'd, be, you'd feel comfortable, you'd feel safe, you'd want to do business in any of our 47 counties, Mr. Speaker, and feel at home. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, listening to the utterances, reading through the response, uh, Mr. Speaker, and the pleadings by his lawyers, and the pleadings and the admission, Mr. Speaker, by his own affidavit, Mr. Speaker, that either my good friend, the Deputy President, doesn't appreciate the higher calling that the office he occupies demands of him, or he has completely refused, Mr. Speaker, to accept the dictates of our Constitution. And when you get to that law, that place, sorry, uh, Mr. Speaker, where there is conflict between man and our constitution, then man must give way for our constitution to thrive. That is a demand of a public office. Mr. Speaker, I know this is not an easy exercise. I have agonized and sat there wondering whether there could be other ways we could resolve this issue. And I know for a fact that there have been attempts, Mr. Speaker, not just this time, but previously. I know for a fact, Mr. Speaker, that there have been occasions where either religious leaders, friends, people from business circles, Mr. Speaker, have attempted actually to mediate through some of these conflicts. But unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, instead of getting better, things have gotten worse. What is the essence of this session? that we are having. Mr. Speaker, after listening through an impeachment process, the Senate sits as a jury to make a decision whether to find guilty or acquit. But like has been observed many times, and I have reminded this House on all the occasions when I have moved impeachment uh, motions the last few years, Mr. Speaker, is an impeachment is political and legal conjoined together. It's about political accountability. It's about legal consequences of our actions as well, Mr. Speaker. There are political challenges, Mr. Speaker, that must be addressed. There are legal issues that have been raised as well, uh, Mr. Speaker, which I want to believe when my colleague senators get the chance to address this House and convince each other. Perhaps people are watching and wondering, what is it that senators are doing at this hour? I believe that all the 67 of us that are here have had occasion to peruse through the evidence, listen, and this is a chance to share your thoughts about what you think and what is a proposed uh, solution. I'm not sure, Mr. Speaker, whether my colleague senators will find the deputy president guilty on all the 11 charges, or one, or two, legally speaker, or none. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm being quickly reminded by uh, my colleague here that it's possible. 
And that is fine because it is based on what you had, what your mind is convinced about these particular charges that have been drawn and what you think is best for this country, uh, Mr. Speaker. I don't intend to be long because I know, uh, Mr. Speaker, we have agreed that we will do this for not for a very long time. And I know there are so many of my colleagues that want to speak on this uh, particular issue. But there are about two or three charges that I want to uh, just focus my thoughts on, uh, Mr. Speaker, and perhaps leave the rest to hear, to be convinced this way or the other by what my colleagues will pick. There is, Mr. Speaker, charge number eight, serious reasons to believe that His Excellency the Deputy President has committed crimes by continuously misleading members of the public through false, malicious, divisive and insightful remarks that are contrary to the provisions of Section 132 of the Penal Code and Section 29 of the Leadership and Integrity Act. We have institutions that are charged with the responsibility of making sure that we are a cohesive society, Mr. Speaker. By statute, actually, after the 2010 Constitution, we set up the National Cohesion and Integration Commission. And it was our sincere hope, Mr. Speaker, that uh, that commission perhaps will help us, especially we that are leaders, learn better from our utterances and do things, say things that leave the rest of Kenyans feeling that they are proud patriots, that the things that we do make them feel at home in this republic. It's unfortunate, Mr. Speaker, that despite this commission, for example, being funded by taxpayers, I have not seen them live up to their expectation. And perhaps part of the challenges that will emerge even after this, post this impeachment process, Mr. Speaker, is to audit how some of these institutions continue to draw from the exchequer, yet not live up to their mandate. In fact, Mr. Speaker, I saw them issue the other day, I think, a statement saying, oh, if you carry out this impeachment uh, process, it will divide the country. I want to tell that Reverend Kobe, I think his name is Chairman, you better resign. I have never seen a public officer that is as disgraced as that gentleman. Why do I say so, Mr. Speaker? I remember in our days, last time, Mr. Speaker, this is the same institution that was so vigilant that will ban us even from co coining phrases like Hatupangwingwi and say that those phrases are divisive to the country. But I've seen for the last two years, Mr. Speaker, these narratives and clips that you are being shown, being whipped, and hurting Kenyans on a daily basis, and have kept quiet about it. But finally, when the National Assembly has moved to say that we must put a stop to this, they finally show up on stage and say, oh, this will divide Kenyans. Mr. Speaker, surely, don't Kenyans deserve better from their public institutions, Mr. Speaker. I hope, Mr. Speaker, that at the end, by the end of this particular exercise, all the commissioners of that particular institution, Mr. Speaker, will find it fit to resign so that we can have Kenyans who understand how we can build a more cohesive society than those that are gatekeepers of those that push divisive narratives, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have been invited as well and have been challenged that on charge 10, that there is gross misconduct by openly or publicly in subordinating the president, who is the head of state and government. And I listened to one of the lawyers urge us and say, uh, where is the complaint from the president? Surely, does the president need to complain to you, Senator Onyonka, to notice that there is a dysfunction in that particular office? That if there is a lack of symphony in action, in word, in deed, Madam Speaker, between the president and the deputy, and there is a continuous spat, such as what has been witnessed the other day, then constitutional consequences might follow so that you clean up and have an institution that works for the greater interest of all the people of uh, the Republic, Mr. Speaker. Finally, Mr. Speaker, I know not everybody agrees uh, with those of us that hold the view that the Senate has been sufficiently convinced by these charges, either one of them, all of them, or none that I say. But what I find difficult, Mr. Speaker, is to accept the proposal by those that want to reduce this House and claim that Parliament is a gathering of just a few people. 
And I have watched many people say that. Pandits on the television, including none other than the deputy president uh, himself, who on many occasions, including last weekend in Embu, has said that his only faith is in the courts of the Republic of Kenya and nothing about this particular house. Mr. Speaker, perhaps it will be important for somebody to remind him what is the history of parliament. Parliament is a gathering of all Kenyans. I have said many times, Mr. Speaker, that because it is not possible for all the 50 million Kenyans to meet at one place and agree on issues, Mr. Speaker, they agreed to do so through their representatives, Article 2 of our Constitution, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, a gathering of a House of Parliament, Mr. Speaker, cannot simply be wished away by Big Describe that a few members either overturning or undermining the will of the people of Kenya. I believe Kenyans speak directly through the election or indirectly through their elected representatives who are the people in the National Assembly, in the Senate, in our county assembly. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, when institutions of accountability are dispensing their constitutional mandate, such as what we are doing today, Mr. Speaker, if you respect our constitution, then respect the outcome and the processes that have been initiated and con uh, concluded in houses of parliament, Mr. Speaker, just as you do with courts of law. And I appreciate, Mr. Speaker, that on many accounts, I know this process has attracted close to 30 petitions in our courts of law. And I agree with the learned judges that have, Mr. Speaker, made a determination that you allow Parliament to conclude on its processes such as such that anybody who is not satisfied with the outcome, Mr. Speaker, can exercise their right to appeal. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, in the interest of time and knowing that many of my colleagues want to speak to this particular issue, I want to conclude it at that and request that the Senate Minority Leader, retired Justice Stewart Mazar,